The poster for the 15th Venice Architecture Biennale is an incongruous photograph by Bruce Chatwin of archaeologist Maria Reiche on a ladder in a desert. Scrutinising the horizon looking for a new perspective is what this year's curator, Chilean architect and 2016 Pritzker Prize winner Alejandra Aravena invites architects to explore in his Biennale titled Reporting from the Front. It is a very powerful image that, in a way, is what we're expecting from the invited practitioners here. Those who have found a different point of view that makes sense out of a reality that nowadays may, may not be like that. Aravena has staged one of the most socially charged architecture biennales and in the opening room of the main Arsenale exhibition, he sets out his stall. Recycling 10 tonnes of waste material from last year's Art Biennale, He's created a conceptual arena for discussion and contemplation, exploring the different ways that design can add value. The more complex the problems, the more the need for thin synthesis. And if there's any power in architecture, that's the power of synthesis. The forces at play in the built environment uh, come from, from politics, from economy, from the environment, from uh, social demands, even from aesthetics and, and culture. In the end, all the places where we live have to have a form, and that form can improve or can ruin the quality of life and can qualify those moments in life for people. So well, let's better make sure that we understood all the forces at play. Aravena invited 88 participants from 37 countries to experientially show projects where inventiveness has, or could, improve quality of life in the built environment. Alborda from Ecuador show that money is not necessarily the most important resource. Other assets such as motivation and even the will to mess things up can be good foundations for success. Their installation, Dark Materials, shows the production cost per square meter of eight different projects to illustrate that cost is not directly related to quality. We will learn a lot from uh, poor environments where the poorer and the tougher the conditions, the more you are required to be creative. So eventually you're not creative because you have a lot of means, and but actually the opposite, because you don't have enough means, then you have to be creative. So then you can learn from that. Hugon Kowalski and Marcin Cetalina from Poland present the life cycle of garbage in the slums of India, where people live by what they earn from waste collection. Removal is a conventional solution but would rob residents of their sole income. Understanding the issues and finding creative ways to manage problems are needed to help enable a community. A different example from Amateur Architecture Studio in China shows how professional prestige can change the status quo. The city of Huangzhou commissioned them to build the Fuyang National Museum. They agreed on the condition that they could preserve elements of the existing villages. Presenting a series of palettes, they put the spotlight on the beauty and the skill of traditional handmade techniques. Amateur architecture studio find value in these ancient techniques which are environmentally, socially and culturally sustainable. As soon as you want to move out and improve the current conditions, even by one millimeter, the, the kind of resistance that you find it's huge because of the toughness and, and scarcity of means or the weakness of the institution. So the idea of reporting from the front was to listen from those that were able to expand our, our notion of quality and learn from them what were the tipping points, what did it take to go beyond uh, the business as usual. Berlin-based Bell Architects invite viewers to find their own perspective as they gaze over a vast 1 to 100 scale model of urban situations. To help solve an imminent housing crisis resulting from mass migration, they borrow from the past when a strategy of incremental architecture was introduced. The principle being that if you can't afford to do everything right away, work on the core necessities first, then allow families to complete their homes in their own time and in their own way. Theirs is an experimental journey into large-scale challenges and opportunities. It would be a mistake to identify the front lines or the challenges only connected to the more satisfying basic needs. If we agree that architecture is about giving form to the places where people live, 
It's not more complicated than that, but it's not easier than that. Places where people live. What is life? Of course it's basic needs. We need to take care of basic needs, otherwise we're not, uh, not, uh, not talking about life. But if we solve all of them, maybe there's not life, it's just survival. If we only think that life is on the artistic, cultural end of the spectrum, spectrum but we haven't satisfied basic need, I guess that then we'll be missing the majority of the population of the world. And the thing is not to choose one or the other, and, and this, I would say, is what makes practice so difficult and the end user so clueless while trying to demand from architecture that quality that we're all looking for. Lightscapes is a collaboration between Transolar's Matthias Schuller and architect Anja Thierfelder. Taking inspiration from forests and Middle Eastern architecture, they merge technology with local knowledge. Here, a perforated dome brings a rain of light to the spaces below, illustrating how design strategies can find efficiency by channeling forces of nature. This is an evocative and more subtle example of Aravena's quest for shared stories where architectural inventiveness can make a difference. I would say that in, in a line that goes from uh, nihilism to romanticism. I wouldn't call myself an optimist. I would say it's, a, a, let's say, a reasonable skepticism and a rigorous uh, desire to change the situation. So it's a balance between need and desire, and somewhere in between is the attitude that will allow us to produce quality built environments. In Venice, for Monocle, I'm Julian Tobias. <laughs>